Wow, okay, so I've been having some thoughts, and uh, this video is going out to the Islet family, wherever you are around the world. Um, I thought it was time to actually put these thoughts down in video that can live forever so that people understand what Islet is, where it came from, what we're doing, and where we're going. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Adam Kanakin. I am the founder and CEO of the ILET Network. And um, it has been my absolute privilege over the last two, two and a half years to work with some of the most amazing instructors, trainers, experts in the world when it comes to law enforcement and public safety training. And there's a lot of people that ask me, where did ILET come from? Where did it start? What were the beginnings? And what are we about? You know, what is at the core? of what I let is. And so I have these discussions day after day with our partners and our trainers and everybody that's come on board to support I let, but I haven't put it out to the world. I haven't shared that yet. And that's what I want to do here. And I don't know how long this video is going to be. I'm going to try to be succinct as I can, but I want to get all the points out there. I think I owe it to you. I owe it to the entire community here within I let and this family to be transparent. I always use that word transparency and it is important. And so um, I want to go back. I want to start at the very beginning. And these thoughts I've had this evening as we're working, putting together the 2022 ILET Summit, um, I noticed that I was wearing the Tactical Breakdown shirt. This is the very first shirt that uh, I made that was branded for the Tactical Breakdown podcast, which is where everything began back in summer of 2019. Uh, at the time, I was living uh, in Winnipeg with my wife. Um, we had two very little children um, that were born nine months apart, and she was off on mat leave. I was actually uh, working for myself, running a training company in the private security space at the time. And I was working, and the podcast started in our basement in this little cubicle I bought with uh, sound panels. And I put this thing together and I, I stapled some foam to the walls and I had this little four foot by two foot desk um, and a crappy microphone. And that's where everything started for Tactical Breakdown. It was really hilarious because looking back at where we were then to where we are now, and some of the amazing venues we've been in, the amazing people we've had the opportunity to speak with, and the interviews that we've done just in the podcast alone um, has been really, really special. And it's interesting when you always have the chance to look back at where it is that you came from. When you, when you go and you do things day by day by day, you usually don't get to see the changes, right? Because it's happening right in front of you. You know, um, I would equate it to, you know, you have a new kid and you spend some time away and you come back and you can see how much they've grown, even if you've been away for a few weeks. That's kind of what happened to me. You know, I've been so hyper-focused on what we're doing with ILET that I never took the time to sit back and look at what we've accomplished. And I will say up front with everybody here listening, what Islet has become is in no way, shape, or form um, because of what Adam has done and what I've done. It is about the people that are involved in this community and what they've given and the time and the energy and the resources to help make this vision a reality. And so we started with the podcast in 2019, and the concept of the podcast was simple. It was take some training that we know that we're delivering to people. And at the time it was, it was wide open. We were talking law enforcement, military, first responders, everybody under the sun. And we started to hyper-focus into the law enforcement public safety space. But the concept was always around training. The concept was always, you know, you're on the range and you get this little two minute to five minute drill that you get to do. You're out there, you're shooting and you're like, wow, that was really cool. I felt like I got a lot out of that. I want to run it again. And I want to run it again. And every time you find something new, you pick something new out of it. And you're like, wow, this is a really great drill, really great training that I'm getting. Instead of talking about the five minute front facing exercise and drill that we're running, I want to go back and I want to talk about the 80 hours that went into building 
the five minutes of training. I want to talk about the why. You know, Simon Sinek wrote a great book, Start With Why. And that is kind of where I leaned into to start putting pieces together about how I wanted to conduct interviews. I wanted to pull apart instructors' brains and say, how did this happen? How did we come up with this and why is it so important? And that was what the podcast was always about. And through my relationships and time previously with the military, uh, for those of you who don't know, I was a former infantry officer with the Canadian Forces and ended up having to be uh, having the ability to work as a training officer within our regiment. And I was exposed to not just through the military, but through the private sector and the law enforcement space, some of the best instructors in the world. And I've been very fortunate. I've always felt like I've been in the right place at the right time, in the right room, talking to the right people and developing relationships. That was the start of the foundation that built what I led is today. In the end of 2019, I had some conversations with uh, some instructors you probably know of. If you've been around ILET for a while, you'll you'll know the Scott Savage, you know uh, Chris Butler's, you know um, the Tony Blowers and the John Bostains. I had a conversation with these guys early on, and I said, I want to start putting something out to the world. You know, at the time, I remember having conversations with use of force instructors that had never heard of Force Science Institute. I was having conversations with instructors that had never heard of ILETA, or if they were a firearms instructor, they had never heard of ILFE or NLFIA, or if they were FTO, they never heard of NAFTO. It was always strange to me that we have world-leading organizations and associations with experts and training available to us, and we just don't know they exist. And you can't take advantage of something you don't know exists. And so we built the first ILET Summit the framework behind it in the winter of 2019 and early 2020. Now, if you're tracking a timeline, you'll understand that this is before COVID was even a thing. This is before the pandemic ever happened. And so when COVID did hit and training got shut down around the world, we just so happened to have something already built that was designed to deliver online training internationally with some of the best trainers in the world and doing it for free. And so we rolled out the first ILET Summit. It was very, very uh, nerve wracking. Obviously, I'd never done anything like that before. I built it out in my basement by myself. I hired some freelancers here and there to help with some of the really technical website stuff. But for the most part, it was me jumping on a Zoom call or a StreamYard, which we still use today, um, and recording sessions with instructors saying, hey, can we can we put something together here? And it was nothing formal. It was just, let's talk shop. Let's get some information down so that people can get it. And uh, we rolled the first ILET Summit out in uh, July of 2020. And we had over 10,000 officers from 76 countries jump on board and check out what we were doing with that event. Um, I think the coolest takeaway from that entire thing, not just was the the amount of people that joined us, but the fact that we were able to raise over $15,000 for an organization called Copline, which is an amazing organization um, for, it's a crisis line for law enforcement personnel. Um, and I really feel like that was the starting point of me understanding what we could do with this platform, with this community, the good that we could do, not just in delivering training, but through supporting organizations and nonprofits and groups that do other things to support first responders and public safety professionals. And so that was kind of the starting point. From there, we had the opportunity to work with some amazing organizations and put on online events for them up here in Canada, down in the US, and uh, really just started building connections back and forth and doing more training and more podcasts and attending other conferences. And over time, we then we said, well, hey, let's do this again in 2021. Ran the second summit last year. and. As we started to pick up steam, I started to realize, you know, we have to have something that's at the center of, of what I let is. We we have to develop a, a mantra or an ethos or a mission or a values or a you can call it whatever you want. It is at the core of what I let is. And of uh one of my mentors and somebody who has been instrumental in building I let and assisting me in putting all of the pieces together because I'm very scatterbrained. And so I have a million ideas. Um, and uh, Dr. John Black was one of the fellows that was able to actually help me put all those pieces together into something that was actually uh, actually workable. 
that was operationally uh, viable. And so he explained to me that as I vented for hours and hours on end about what I wanted ILET to be, he broke it down into four simple words, people, purpose, project, pay. And that's the hierarchy that I work off of uh, from that day forward uh, till now and, and every day in the future. Those are the tenants. That is the hierarchy that I let functions off of people first. It's always about people first. You know, if you ask anybody who's been involved with ILET, um, who's helped us out with training, who works for us now, volunteers, all of that stuff, the first thing I'll say to anybody is family comes first. I know myself, I have four young children and they have to take priority. Your family has to take priority. I think everybody in this industry, I come from the military background, those of you in law enforcement, those of you in corrections or other public safety professions, you know this. And sometimes we do a really shitty job at prioritizing what we should. And um, if you take nothing else away from this call, take it as a wake up call. Adam saying, hey, spend some more time with your families. Make sure you put them first. Um, make sure you put your partners first, which is something I'm still working on daily. One step down, but very closely tied to people is purpose. What is your purpose? What is your mission? What are your values? What do you hold You know, right inside here? that it, you will not you will not give up for any reason. You'll see it now in our new strategic partners policy that we've developed within ILET. It's about our values, it's about our credo. What are we doing? I always used to say we our mission was to deliver as much actionable relevant training to as many officers as possible. But we've evolved so much past that. ILET has the ability to not only increase capabilities of officers but increase capacity for agencies it has the ability to connect people around the world it has the ability to allow you access to experts and instructors that you may never have had access to before which may in turn allow you to do your job just a little bit better which may in turn help you save a life or help save your life or help out a family in need or help out your partner or help your agency i let is built around that foundational concept that we do the right thing first. We do the right things for the right reasons. And if you're not willing to do the right thing and you want to skirt under the table, you want to take the gray area, you want to do things in a way that some people are going to see like, ah, should I really have done it? We don't want that here. We're open, we're transparent, we're honest to a fault. Um, a lot of people that are partnered with ILET will know this and our founding members group specifically with an ILET, um, we, we have a founding members group of 200 people. We don't have it. It's not full yet as of the recording of this video. So um, we can actually put that in the link below. So if a lot of this is speaking to you and to who you actually are as a person, um, check out the founding members link. But the, the founding members group is going to be 200 people that have the same beliefs and values that I do, that ILET does. And it's about sharing and experiencing this journey together. And uh, they'll tell you I overshare. I'm overly transparent with everything. And so um, that's really what family is. So people, purpose, project. So after those first two criteria are met, we start looking at the projects. So whether it's training or we're doing, uh, you know, podcast content creation, or we're going to conferences, or we're, we're working with new companies or instructors, it has to be mutually beneficial. It has to be balanced because if it's not balanced, it can't last long term. And if it can't last long term, why the hell are we doing it? That doesn't make any sense to me. I don't do one offs. One offs suck because then you just have to redo it again and do it again and do it again. And that's a waste of freaking time. And so when we build our relationships, whether it's with trainers, with companies, with partners, NGOs, agencies, governments, it doesn't matter. It's about sustainability. It's about making sure that we are always able to benefit each other and it goes both ways and so people purpose project and then after those three things are done the last piece the least important piece for us here at ILET is pay profit revenue call it whatever you want the money is the least important thing for us it's about training first it's about doing the right thing first it's about helping your fellow man or woman or person first it, it truly is at the core of what we do and what we believe in. It's about who we are and who we are is the people that do the right thing. We're the ones that run towards the gunfire, not away from it. 
And if you're that type of person, this is what this community is for. This is for you. It's to have like-minded individuals that understand that all of the red tape, all of the bullshit that happens between agencies, between groups, between companies that say, hey, I'm not going to share that because that's ours. Or um, we can't share that because we don't like them today. That doesn't happen here at ILET. And the reason it doesn't happen is because the delay in that information transfer could end up being the reason why somebody didn't make it home. You know, I'm, I'm sitting here right now um, and I'm having conversations and text messages back and forth with other instructors um, about the tragic event that just took place uh, with an active shooter training incident in the United States where an officer was actually shot in the face and a live round made its way into a training environment. That should never happen. That should never happen. There are so many checks and balances. There are so many things that have to go wrong for that to happen that it's so frustrating when we see those types of things. Maybe, just maybe, ILET can prevent things like that from happening in the future because we're sharing information. We're showing instructors, hey, if you're going to run these types of trainings, Here's how you do it. Here's how you do it effectively, safely. Here's the most evidence-based practices that we know of adult learning and pedagogy. And how do we take information from our brains and put it into another human being? All of that information is shared here and it's open. And that is what ILED is about. And pay and profit and revenue is the last thing on our minds. It's, it's, it's a byproduct, you know? Obviously, if you're part of ILET, there's probably things that you may have helped us out with or you've been a part of, whether it's purchasing our I Got Your Sick stuff that goes to charity, or you're going to buy in and be part of our membership group or our founding members group. And all of that helps us grow and share what this community is with more people. And that's what it's about. It's about growth. And so that hierarchy, that people purpose project pay is the foundation of what ILET is built on. We want to help you. We want to help your agency. We want to help people from around the world. And it's not just Canadian based because we're, I'm here in Canada. It's not just US based because the majority of folks that attend ILET right now are in the United States. We have founding members. We have 18 uh, in, international liaison officers that we're identifying around the globe on every inhabited continent to make sure that we have a touch point for everybody. And I'm so excited to be able to start putting these pieces together. You know, we're going to be announcing very shortly here a project working with the National Police in Ukraine and supporting them because they're getting uh, their butts handed to them right now in that conflict. And it doesn't mean that we're saying, hey, we're picking sides. I let, and, and to be very, very clear, I let is an apolitical community. It is as apolitical as I can make it. It is about sharing, training, knowledge, and information. And so um, obviously we're going to try to help those officers out in Ukraine. But if there's other officers from other countries, it doesn't matter. If they want to come in here and be a part so that they can learn something to help them better serve their communities, everyone is welcome here at ILED as well. As I reflect back on what we are doing now and this third annual summit that's taking place in less than a month and the instructors that we have on, the companies that we've recently partnered with that are some of the biggest training companies and uh, law enforcement supporters in the world, the international projects that we're doing, the work that we're doing with agencies, federal, state, uh, and local uh, municipal agencies and supporting their officers and their training. All of that started in a little four by four cubicle that I built in a two-story in the basement of a two-story duplex in the middle of Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. And we've reached tens of thousands of officers in over a hundred countries around the world. That is the coolest thing that I could ever think of. And I just want to say thank you to you for being a part of this with us, being a part of this journey. And maybe you've been here since the beginning. If you have, you're awesome. Please contact me and tell me where you first jumped into ILET, whether it was the podcast or the summit or something else. Or if you're brand new and this is the first time you've heard of ILET, maybe this is the first time, this is the first summit that you're going to attend with us. And I'm excited to have you here and I appreciate you being here. And it is truly my honor to, to be able to help 
facilitate this for everyone. You know, um, I say this all the time in phone calls and um, I'll say it here again for everyone. My, uh, my wife gets mad at me daily because she says, all you do is talk to your um, effing friends all day. Usually is the, uh, usually is the phrase I get. And I tell her, you're not wrong. You know, I get to come down to my office right now where I get to go out and I get to deal with people that are like-minded, that have the same passion for training, the same passion for this industry, the same passion for their countries and their communities that I do. And I just get to talk shop. I get to talk stuff that I'm interested in. And how lucky am I that that is something that I get to do that allows me to put food on the table for my family. I don't take that for granted and I never will take that for granted. And I've had a lot of really introspective conversations recently that have allowed me to put that in perspective. And so that was kind of the motivation behind me putting this video together. It wasn't planned today, but I felt it was critical for you to understand what Islet is, where we came from, and now where we're going in the future. And again, I just want to say thank you. If you've stuck around this entire video, um, please let me know, leave a like or a comment, uh, leave a comment in the, uh, uh, comment section below this video. I'll post it up on YouTube. And um, just let me know, how did you find out about ILET? What was your first look at what we're doing? And and what is it that we do that is so important to you? And, and what do you take away from it? And I'm going to get back to work here. We're going to keep putting the summit together for everybody. Uh, hopefully you're able to join us. Uh, links for the summit are going to be below again in this video. It's iletsummit.com. Um, it just refreshes year after year, and we're going to try to run this thing. Um, I'm excited to get to like I let 25, right? 25 years in. We'll see um, if I don't drop dead of a heart attack before then. Uh, but make sure to join us for the summit. Check out the I let community. You can go to community.ilet.network. Um, that's going to be launched also in December with the summit or maybe just after we'll see what happens. And um, I just want to say thank you again. Thank you for being part of ILET. Thank you for doing what you do. Um, thanks for being the person that runs into the gunfire and not away from it. And um, I'm looking forward to working with you, training with you, and uh, maybe sharing a drink down the road. Uh, stay safe, be well, and uh, all the best to you and your loved ones. We'll, uh, we'll see you on the ILET community.